You know, I might make this one short this week. Uh, just want to make sure that you get your money's worth uh, in this entirely free podcast. You know, I'm going to take this this sound effect paper and set it down. I've had an absolutely fantastic Mad Media Monday. Um, in the morning, I went to visit Catherine. And I don't know if you know much about Catherine, but Catherine... Well, um, uh, Catherine is a jeweler in Taiwan, and she's really gotten into happy living, health, and she's trying to help people. And she's, she's, you know, you know, the principle that like jewelry brings good luck, you know, like crystals bring good luck. Well, she saw that with her customers, with herself, she she wears diamonds or whatever, you know, maybe not. All the, but anyhow, she wears nice, expensive gems, and she saw it working. And she has a master's degree, and she, you know, so she said, "Hey, this can't be," you know. So she did her research, and she looked at the whole idea about health and wellness, and this, this, you know, wives' tale about putting diamonds in water before you drink it, and you know, it changes the water or something, and it worked. At least it worked for the questions she was asking. So she started this whole health wellness business, taking diamonds, basically, and putting it in water and shaking it up. And, I mean, there's a lot more to it. You know, she declusters the water and there's there's a lot to it. But she's got this health wellness thing going uh, where she's trying to help people live better lives. And, and people like it. They've got testimonials. They've got before and after pictures. I mean, it's, whoa. So anyhow, I, I went and visited Catherine today. I'd known Catherine for quite a while. And... Um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, all right. Rush Limbaugh has talked about how people start out by saying so, but, um, I'm, um, I, I'm sort of realizing, um, that, um, maybe one of the, um, problems is, is when, um, people have other things called verbal pauses, um, like the word, um, which actually isn't a word. So I'm, I'm going to try my best to cramp down on the term, um, and stop saying it to people all the time. A lot of people do well in audio work, uh, radio podcasting. There is a place to say, uh, because you have to keep sound going on a microphone. Many times, you know, radio stations have to keep broadcasting because of company policy, maybe government policy. And if there's a long silence, that can actually create a problem. So in radio, just so you know, there is actually a purpose behind saying, uh, uh or, you know, something like that using verbal pauses to avoid a long silence. I mean, sometimes, you know, if you're silent for 10 seconds, the computer at the radio station will automatically cut to a commercial break. You know, that, so you've got to, anyhow. Well, today, well, I don't know how much of this I should tell, George. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to talk about, okay, I'll, I'll say this much. Here in Taiwan, the local mayor uh, <laughs> just became premier of the country. And I didn't know it. It's been all over the news. Yes, the mayor of my city. And I've got a friend in the government uh, that I uh, <clears throat> talk to once in a while. And I go bug him, mainly because in America, I'd bug my congressman every once in a while. You know, largely, largely to encourage them, but I, I needed someone to go bug in the government. And so I got to be friends with this guy and he kind of got promoted up in government. And, but we stay in touch and he, he likes hearing my perspective on things. Maybe he likes practicing his English, you know, uh, maybe he likes, uh, the, uh, opinion of Americans. Uh, but I, um, I kind of actually worried when I found out that the mayor had left to become premier of Taiwan, that maybe my friend had gone with him. And so I couldn't see my friend anymore. So I stopped by his office today and he's still there. That's right. So, well, it is kind of a shame because, I mean, his family's in Taipei, George. 
I think it'd be, well, or near tight, you know. I think it'd be, I'd, that's a yay boo. You, you, you know how promotions are. They're happening all over, aren't they? I, I'm, I'm just seeing promotions happen in your life. You know, friends are getting promoted. People are shifting around, shuffling around, you know. All right. My, my crazy idea. I've, I can't believe I'm sharing this with you unannounced. I mean, this is inside baseball. I haven't had time to read. I just had this idea today. Well, actually, I had the idea several years ago, but I sort of canned it and reopened the can today. Maybe I need to tell you so that I can, I can, not George is really pushing me to tell you this. Um, <clears throat> I've been writing syndicated editorial style syndication opinion pieces for at least the last five years, every week like clockwork. Early on in that, there may have been a few weeks that I was late or maybe skipped Christmas or I was traveling. We're talking one or two times at most. I'm thinking that I should approach some local newspapers in the States and offer to do a Monday column. I'm, I'm really seriously thinking about it. Not sure. Don't have my mind made up, but I am thinking about it. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I predicted Trump would get elected. I know my stuff. I've got a style. People can look at a history. I'm regular. I'm, I'm informed. I've got a very interesting mixed up life, you know, not, not upside down life, but mixed up. I mean, I'm an American in Asia, you know, and well, no, I was there with the sunflower students when they were in Taiwan's legislature. I watched them leave, you know, there, there are things like that that make you informed. And I have an interesting opinion and I'll bet that people might be more inclined to buy a local newspaper on a Monday morning if Jesse has something to say in it. I, I'm th thinking about it. I'm thinking, I'm toying with, so I'm not going to keep talking forever because I need to go think about this. So I'm going to get to the point. Don't overreach. Don't overdo it. It's easy to think that high standards always help. High standards can help but not if they become entry-level requirements. Allow people to grow. Allow yourself to grow. Allow on-ramps everywhere in your life. High standards are not about expecting every rookie to start out as a seasoned pro. We don't only want to set high standards. We want to reach them. Search for potential. Allow for the best. Teach and encourage even the worst. When people excel, get out of the way. Above all, look for passion. Anyone can learn anything when fascinated. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.